Okay, so on Prime Day, I bought a Raspberry Pi camera version two uh, because it was reduced to £19.19 .19, and I just thought it would be interesting to have a look, see what you can do with the camera. Uh, and my first test was to see if I could create a portable Raspberry Pi camera. So I took my Big Tree Tech screen, Big Tree Tech gave me this screen uh, a while ago and I've got a separate video on that. Uh, and it actually, the Pi bolts onto it and it is a touch screen device. So on the back, you can see I've got a floppy disk just to hold it all together, but also I've got the camera connected to that. There's a ribbon cable that goes around and goes into the camera input on the Pi. Uh, and then the reason I've got a separate SD card adapter is because this ribbon cable blocks the SD card slot, so you can't get an SD card in and out when you're using it. So this allows you to put an, an SD card in, but have access to it at all times. Uh, and it, it just, the floppy disk just keeps it a bit more rigid. So that's the camera I was using, but obviously I need power for that. And uh, I bought a power bank, which is this one. Uh, so if I plug that in, you can see that the Pi will start to boot up. Now, obviously if I was gonna use this as a main camera, I would, I would somehow make some sort of casing or fix it all together. I was actually using this as is. So it was kind of a two-handed camera to take photos, which wasn't ideal but I was just doing it out of interest really. I wasn't, I don't plan to use this as my main camera, but I just wanted to see how, how well it took still photos. So every time I wanted to take a photo, I either had to let it boot up into Raspberry Pi OS, which it has done now. Uh, so you can imagine the first shot I took, which was uh, this one with uh, outside a garage, I must have looked really quite suspicious holding these two modules and waiting for it to start up. And then I had to get the grips with the interface because the interface on this is a bit crazy. So to take a photo, I have to launch terminal uh, with the touch screen and you can see that comes up. I then had to launch the, uh, I've put a keyboard on here. Uh, so this is the keyboard and I'll show how to install this in a minute. So it's an on-screen uh, touch keyboard, which isn't great for this five inch screen. Uh, it really struggles. So then I had to locate the up arrow to give the last terminal, as you can see, I missed it then. Uh, and that's showing me the last command, and I'll show this on the big screen in a minute. Uh, hit return, and then what it will do is it will take the photo. So if you put something in the front of it, and wait a few seconds, I'm probably a bit close to that. Now it's taken a photo. So to know that your photo is taken all right, obviously you saw a little snapshot of it there. Uh, you've got to go to the folder. Uh, you've got to then scroll down, and you'll see a picture called firstpick.jpg. If you double tap on that, it will launch the photo. But I, what I had to do was click on the actual text and rename the text because every time this way of taking a photograph uh, takes a photograph, it calls it firstpick.jpg. If you take another photograph, it just overwrites it. Now, obviously, you can go through and you can create a way of taking a photo and naming it in a particular way, or you can use a separate app. Although I didn't find many apps that lend themselves to this being used as a camera. Um, I did see cheese and I didn't end up trying that because I ran out of time and I had a bit of a window where I could go out on my bike and the weather wasn't too bad and I could take these photos. So let's put this on the big screen so you can see the interface I was working at and also how to install that keyboard. So close that down, close down the keyboard, start and log out and shut down. Okay, so much better now I'm on the big screen. So let's show you the process I was using to take a photo. So what I would do is open the terminal. I would then open the touchscreen keyboard, which was accessories and keyboard. This is much easier with a mouse and keyboard. I would then press the up arrow and that would launch this command. So raspi still dash o first pick dot jpeg. And what that would do is it would launch the camera uh, take a photo and store it as firstpick.jpg in the Pi home folder. So then, then what I would do is click on the folder, uh, and this is much better because I'm on a bigger screen now, but bearing in mind this was all bunched up when I was doing it. So uh, you can see in this folder, uh, if I scroll down, uh, I had firstpick.jpg, and if I wanted to look at the picture, I would double click it, and you can see that it was out of focus because it was way too close. But I didn't bother looking at the pictures. I literally just clicked on it and then I would rename it. I would randomly type things on this keyboard uh, and then hit OK and that would save the image and then I could go back and do the whole process again. So I could go back to terminal. Uh, I, would, I could uh, press return, 
and that would take another photo and and so I did this about 20 times so let's have a look at the photos that the Pi took and at the end of this I'll show the photos I took on my iPhone XS uh, just to give you an idea because iPhone XS uh, and, and most modern smartphones now rely heavily on computational photography so they interpret the picture and they try and do the best that they can with that picture uh, and so it'll be interesting to do uh, I'll overlay them so I'll go from the Pi picture into the iPhone picture and I'll try and line them up as much as possible so that you know it's it, it's clear that it's changing from one to the other anyway so let's have a look I've got my Pi cam photos on the desktop here uh, so this is in no particular order because the first one I took was at the garage uh, so you can see it was a bit of a dull day uh, and uh, the focus isn't great, it's, uh, it's okay. I was trying to be as still as I could. Um, let's go for the next one here. Uh, focus seemed a bit better on that, but I preferred it on the grass down the bottom there. Um, but uh, I guess the camera literally is just a fixed focus camera when used in this mode. If anybody knows better ways of using it, as I say, I'm not, I'm not going to use the Pi as my camera, but I just, I just had a bit of fun with it. But if anybody's got any suggestions of programs for maybe, just like a camera app on a phone that you could literally just press a button, uh, maybe zoom, maybe, maybe do various different things. I don't know if one exists uh, for the Pi uh, because it's not a main use for it. So next photo, this is a local record store. You can see a lot of these photos aren't particularly straight. Uh, and this is because the uh, connected to the floppy disk, uh, it would actually twist ever so slightly. And I'm there with my bike, holding my bike, with uh, two hands you know, holding the power bank, holding the Pi, and trying to get the photo. So I would literally take this photo, and then straight after I'd take one on my iPhone. I thought this one was all right. I quite like the jaunty angle on this one. Um, so it, it did okay. You know, most of it is is reasonably focused. It's not sharp. But uh, most of it is reasonably focused and the, and the detail level is there. Uh, that was okay as well. Again, this oh, on the right, it's, maybe there is some sort of autofocus because it does seem to have picked up this bush and we've got a tiny bit of depth of field with that building behind it. I'm clutching its drawers. Yeah, so it seems to have focused on that. that this one, I, I did a video of this, uh, which was, uh, and I'll show the video now. So. I was recording it on my phone to show you how I was taking a photo out in the field and I, I, I realised I must have looked hard doing it uh, because I'd laid down my pie and the power bank on this wall and uh, just took the photo. Bit of CX, one of my favourite stores. Uh, picked, picked up alright really, I thought the colour was okay on it, it was, uh, you know, there's, there's enough detail there. Then the square in my local town. Rather nice building, that's the museum. So this was a local store. You always got interesting things in the window. It looks especially good at night. They light it up incredibly well. And I just thought that that's quite a funny looking sign. A uh, couple of phone boxes for people who aren't in the UK. We still have these. Uh, and, and their phones actually work in these. Not like when they used to be in the 80s. Uh, here's the museum and the square again, which is... Uh, one of the main parts of town. And there's the first picture I took uh, outside a garage. And a local building with some birds on the top. See, again, the detail level looks all right. I, th I think it's just not, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm used to looking at photos on my iPad Pro, which has got an amazing screen. This Acer monitor is a, is a basic monitor, so maybe they're gonna look better when I'm gonna edit them. Uh, this one was weird because it, it kind of focused here. You'd think it would focus on this focus point, but maybe, uh, it doesn't have a close focus point uh, and maybe it maybe it struggles to get that depth there we go the back of the phone boxes with a nice bit of graffiti on the back there uh, and then back to the beginning so I was going to show how I installed the keyboard I don't I'll just look through terminal I must have installed it through the app store uh, so add remove software so it looks like Matchbox keyboard was the one I used. Uh, so if you just tick those and hit apply, then go to accessories, then you will have that keyboard. Okay, so let's move on to the slideshow. Anyway, I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.